I had some Russian lessons, but they are like 25 years ago. It was in the fifth and sixth grade. The only thing I can remember is Minyazavut uh, Martin and Yaluk Yus Madrid Televisor. Yeah, about me. You can find me uh, on Twitter at MK. Um, I have my own company in Hamburg. Um, it's called Ubilabs. Um, we are focused on maps application, um, so we build all types of interactive vis visualization using maps tab technologies. And we have an office in Hamburg and one in, in San Francisco, which recently opened. And we work for like all types of screen. We, we, we did this, this, for example, this in, um, at the Times Square in New York. It was, I think it's the biggest screen you have in the world. It opened last uh, December. Uh, but we also do a lot of stuff for the web browser and also for the mobile phones. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is like how to scale, like you see in from a really large scale to a small device, but in terms of code. So you would see something different that you don't do every day during your day job, but what you might do at home using really less amount of characters. Um, <coughs> yeah, I have my own website, it's M1K. You can find some crazy hacks over there. Um, one thing I was, or I got famous for uh, is this thing. Um, it's something called Aquine. So this is the source code, what you see here. It's JavaScript uh, inside of a script tag in a HTML page. And if you open this in a web browser, you would see this. So it's a spinning 3D globe inside of the globe, which renders itself um, using color, colorized code. And I gave a talk about this like two years ago at the JSConf, and I continue to work on this kind of projects. And one thing I did, in, I think, last year is this Mandel code. Um, this is the source code itself. So it looks like a Mandel prod. You might know about this. It's a fractal. And uh, in the browser, it runs like this. So it outputs its own source code, which is called a quine in programming. And in the center, there's uh, a sentence, Mandel code, a quine by MK, click to zoom. So you have to click. And once you click it, um, it starts to zoom in. And yeah, it takes like two minutes or something like this. Uh, and it goes deeper and deeper. And it's just based on this like really small amount of characters. I think it's only like 300. Um, characters to render this. And um, yeah, this, this is just an example of, of what I'm doing. So it gives you an impression. And it takes some time until it really reaches the limit of JavaScript where you don't have the separation of the float values anymore. And then the code will break, which looks quite good in a second if we can reach it. OK, here you see, now it's broken. Um, yeah. Another thing I did is uh, jsfuck.com. Not sure if you know about this. Um, this was another kind of like tiny limitation. I was wondering uh, how many characters you need to write valid JavaScript. And it turns out that you only need um, parentheses, plus sign, uh, square brackets, and an uh, exclamation mark. And I set up a website where you can input, for example, alert one, uh, hit encode, and it gives you back something like this. And you see it's only like six different characters. And you can copy this, paste it on the console, and it will like execute this without having an interpreter in between. So I'm going to explain how this works later. But it should give you an impression of what I'm doing. Um, but before we start, I would like to show you how to minify things. Um, and there are two things that we need here. It's HTML and JavaScript. I always leave out um, CSS because it's like an external resource. I could put it inside, but it would be way too much. And uh, if we want to play with HTML, we knew something that's called dynamic HTML5. So um, this is something most people think of a boilerplate. And I'm one quickly through this, uh, how we can reduce this. We don't need the doc type. We can skip the HTML tag. We don't need the hat. Um, we don't need a title if we just focus on the, on the content. Uh, we don't need the type for the script. And we can also like, uh, execute all the script in the onload handler. And if you have this and nothing in the body, then we can also skip the closing uh, body tag. 
Here we have body unload, and then there's something in there. And if this code doesn't contain um, a space, we can also uh, <laughs> skip the quotes and have this. So this is like the shortest HTML uh, boilerplate that you need to, to, to run code. <clears throat> and let's see what we can do with it. Um, yeah, this, this would be one of the most easiest scripts. So we can hit alert. But I always want to render something in a page. So the first thing I came up with was with a document write. And you can write something. The problem is when you try to animate this, it will always append things to the end of the body. Uh, so we have to use document body inner HTML1, which is quite long. And um, if we use an ID on the body, then this is something most people don't know. But if you specify an, eight, an, an ID in the DOM, then you have access to this um, by just using the name of the ID. So I don't know why jQuery exists, because we don't need this dollar sign. <laughs> uh, but this is like the shortest form to do. Um, I want to have this preformat, uh, preformatted, so like with a fixed column size. So I can you say pre and whatever. Um, but this would break because the browser, the browser uh, thinks it, it will be a closing tag. So we have to use quotes here and um, yeah, wrap the whole script in, inside of um, quotes. Let me see what's next. OK, yeah. There's one thing to optimize here. Um, and this is like the space in between IDB and on load. Because once we have um, quotes, we can easily put the ID behind it and remove the space here. So <laughs> it's a cool thing to, to do. And one thing to optimize is even more is if we have this pre tag, we can also pull it outside, have an ID, and then use the script tag. Um, and this is even shorter than before. You see this? I'm in a way. It's OK? Yeah? OK. Um, so this was about um, HTML. Now I'm focusing on JavaScript. Just a basic example what to, uh, how to do it. Um, this is a stupid example, but it shows you how to deal with this kind of stuff. So we have three RAS and math random, math random, and then we get the, the maximum one of them. And let me see. So we, we can skip the RAS because we don't care about global leakage and uh, stuff like this. Um, we can have a variable called m, which equals to math. And then we skip the math in the other rows and only have the m. We can also have a reference to math random and only say r. This should be obvious. Now it's getting more interesting, because we can also have r defined as a string random, and then access this as a method name based on the math. Um, and the cool thing is that you can save some bytes by moving the R inside of the first um, <laughs> square bracket. <laughs> so this is the kind of things that you have to learn how to like magnify stuff. And uh, you can go even further by simply saying with math, because then you need, don't need the math anymore, and uh, simply call random here, or use the thing that we, uh, you, you, you can skip the um, curly brackets, once you say, like, comma, and you can say, OK, R is random, and then only call it the random thing. And this is how it looks when you compress it to one line. So it's way shorter. And this is something that, that I need, because I always want to make it fit into this 1K, so 1,200 characters or bytes. And yeah, let's see what's next. OK, yeah, this, this is funny, because um, I checked the dates, and Exactly one year ago, I finished this project. I presented this in, in San Francisco. Uh, it's called Death Star. You see this? It's something new I came up with while playing around with different character sets. So what you see here is an HTML page, or the source code of an HTML page. And if you look close, you see body on load, and then you have this JavaScript in there. And if you really look close, you might think, OK, there's, there's no method name, nothing in there. So it only uses Kyrillic um, characters to execute code. And once you run this, 
you will see this, or if you look close, there's, there's this little star in there, and once you run this, it will give you an alert with the star inside. I'm gonna explain to you how this works, but it would take some time, because I'm gonna show you some more example. So I came up with the first um, Hebrew JavaScript. I think no one has done this before, writing uh, JavaScript with Hebrew alphabet only. Um, the cool thing is that you have to read it from right to left. And <laughs> it's funny because if you open this in the browser, it, it's totally mixed up because the browser changes the, the writing direction of this stuff. It's crazy. Uh, another thing is writing Jap Japanese code, which looks like it's written from um, top to bottom. But I use um, um, tabs to, to make it look like this. And if you copy this, uh, paste it into your command line, then it also gives you back an uh, alert one. But um, what I thought about here is, OK, the, the output of this is really small. So in the, in the Russian style, it's only a star alert. And the Hebrew, I think, only gives you back an hello. And this one gives you an alert one or something like this. And I was wondering, OK, can we improve this even more? And I came up with something that I showed at the JS Conf in Asia uh, last November in Singapore. And it was, you see it? It's this. So uh, it's the matrix intro sequence in uh, 1K. And you see these characters falling down. And if you stop this and look at this, then you see, OK, this is the own source code. So it, it shows its own source code, animates it, and it's using only Asian characters. And the question here was how to write JavaScript uh, without Latin characters. One moment. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, anticipation. <laughs> Sorry. OK, now it's getting, getting crazy. Um, one thing that we can do is using uh, escape sequences. And one thing we can use is uh, what I call playing Scrabble um, about escape sequences. If we have an A, we can also say uh, backslash U to use this Unicode escaping and specify the Unicode uh, behind it. So uh, you can write, for example, this in JavaScript, and this matches a lot warm. So you don't need the, uh, the exact um, uh, characters. You can also apply this for um, higher level Unicode characters. For example, this is the symbol for rain. And, uh, Chinese and you also for, for E in the Cyrillic alphabet. Um, another way to do it would be to uh, use the hexadecimal escaping with the backslash X and then a hex code. But you can't use this in the code itself, only in, inside of strings. Uh, and another way to do is using octal sequences. Most people don't know about this, but this is only using um, Zero, uh, zero till seven, so eight different characters. And if you place this behind the backslash, then you have the access to the ASCII um, character set. And this is, for example, a valid JavaScript. Uh, this is crazy, too, because it will also alert one. And you don't see any character in there. Uh, and I'm going to explain you how this works, because it only contains numbers here. Um, and it matches to this. And if you write this in one line, you see, OK, this is OK, uh, array map constructor a lot one. And um, to explain to you how this works is, OK, if we say um, array and then get the map method, uh, it's basically any kind of fun. We, we could also say filter or split no, not split, but join or stuff like this. And if we have a function and then access the constructor out of it, we get the function constructor, which is basically something like um, an alert once you, uh, an, an, uh, something like an eval once you pass um, code to it as a string. <coughs> and this is like how to obfuscate your eval uh, without saying eval. OK, this was one way. Another way is to use or to play Scrabble. Check the time. OK, we're on time. Um, this is funny. This is, this is what I use for the JSFuck project. Um, if you have an array and say not array, you will get false. 
if you say not not array, you will get true. Simple, yeah? If you then add an empty string to it, you will get the string false and the string true. Easy. What you can do then, you can get a specific character. For example, the first, second, and third. So you get T, R, U, and E. Uh, and if you proceed and get different characters from false and true at a different position, you would see, OK, I got something, and it's called alert. So, <laughs> so you would simply add, add this together to do whatever you like. And the cool thing is, and so this, that's why I call it Scrabble. So it's like playing Scrabble. And you have different um, things you can use. You, you can use false, object, uh, undefined, true. I think that's it. And the most interesting thing is that you can get the string constructor out of it. And once you have constructor, and you have a way to get map, and then you can call whatever you like. For example, what we've seen before. Yeah. The next thing I want to present, or I was thinking about this, and uh, it was, OK, I've done things in 1K of JavaScript. I know how to write JavaScript with six different characters. I know how to write uh, things in different um, alphabets, so Asian or Cyrillic or whatever, or Hebrew. And I thought, OK, will it be possible to do this kind of stuff, uh, invisible code? And this is something new. I've, I've never presented this before. I've, I've done this for the conference. And um, I thought, OK, how can I write code this, that is hidden inside of itself? And I have to check my slides, because it's the first time I do this. Uh, the first idea was to use white space. OK, I thought, OK, we have this uh, different characters here, new line, uh, tab characters. You can't see them, um, but they are existing and you might like escape them and convert them to code. And the problem here was it, it has a width. So you, once you open the browser, you see oh, there's something. Uh, and if you look closer, there are other characters um, in the beginning of the, of the ASCII um, specification. But if you go further to the next stage here uh, from character code 16, you will get this kind of control characters. And they are quite interesting for me, or they are, yeah, they are interesting for me, because um, they don't have a width, so, so it's a zero width character. And once you combine them, you won't see it in a code, because it doesn't use any space. And if you count them, you see, OK, it's exactly 16 different um, characters. And I wrote a code. A script, when you look at the source code, it looks like this. So this is, is, is it's a length of uh, 78 characters here. And once you run it in a browser, uh, on, this is the URL, so it's uh, slash zero. And once you run it in a browser, it gives you back this. Uh, it looks strange first, but you might know this. It's the Conway Game of, Game of Life. So inside of nothing, there's something hidden to produce this kind of world, which will animate over like 1,000 generations. And uh, it will like continue for the next two months like this. And yeah, so this is, this is the source code for itself. And if you look close, there's this escape. It looks like empty string. Uh, but there's something in, in there. And this is the code to generate the, the other stuff. It's, it's quite short. Uh, not sure how many can characters, but like. 200 characters. Um, maybe to explain you how this works. Oh, no, I don't, I don't have it. I'm going to explain you something else. But the, the um, representation on a, on, a, on a byte or on a hexadecimal um, level would be something like this. And I'm going to explain you what, what's happening here. So what we have is escape replace a strange um, regex, um, and it will be re replaced by something. Um, the escape itself contains the, the code, uh, the hidden code. The replace will take the uh, third and sixth characters and join them together and add something in front of it, and it's the backslash x, which is used to um, 
represent hexadecimal um, characters. And yeah, we have this like 16 different characters here, um, which looks like this. Um, if we combine like different characters and then say escape, we get a string that looks like this. And um, we don't need this ampersand one. We split this, join two characters, use the X in front of it, and then we have a lot one in this case. <laughs> so that's the code who does it. The only problem, so I finished this, I worked with Chrome, and I was thinking, mm -hmm. oh, that's cool, no one has done this before. Well, maybe, no one, maybe someone has done this before, but I've never seen it. Uh, and I thought, okay, let's look at this at Firefox. And I, th <laughs> I, I came across this. It's a mods control character visibility visible. This is something set in, it's set, in, set by default in the source code view. And this is, oh shit, because it doesn't show me this, but this. So, because <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Because. I looked up this, why it looks like this, because and, and found this quote uh, within JavaScript. Some people like the idea of displaying control characters, and I said, oh, shit. <laughs> okay, but um, let us play the game on the next level. So I thought, okay, maybe there's something else to, to use. And I thought, okay, maybe I could like even advance this and use something different and hide the code itself in numbers, and I thought about, okay, I'm going to go to a conference in Russia, what, which is, um, what is a popular Russian theme, and I came across Tetris. And uh, Tetris itself um, is a combination of two words. It's tetra and tennis. Tetra is like the Greek um, a prefix for four, and tennis is like the game. And the idea I had was like having this kind of code, but split it up using some um, block comments and have a, the script tag that surround this have only numbers and um, symbols in there. Uh, have this, yeah, this block comments as said. And then inside of it, I have my Tetris board. Let's check the time, okay. And once you run this in the browser, you will get this and you can use the keyboard to control this. And it's called binary Tetris. I think it's only like 200 um, bytes. And you can like move this around, go down, and you will also see once you have a full line, it will go away. <laughs> so it's the, in my opinion, it's the one of the simplest, or it's like the idea of Tetris reduced to really the minimum and the minimum amount of characters. Um, and if you look at the source, we format it a bit, then we will see, okay, the first part is the map constructor, what we've learned about, and then we have this. This is a octal sequence, which uh, is the, the other escape and replace logic. And if we look at this, then the, this was the old um, uh, regular expression, and the new one is like, okay, give us the sixth character and join three together to have something like this, uh, and instead of using 60 characters, we only have like seven different characters um, that are on a really high level in the Unicode spec, and it's, it looks like this. I'm not sure if you can see it. If you zoom in, it's like th these are the characters, and these are special um, characters that are called combining characters, so they are placed, uh, once you write it, they are placed on top of the previous character. So if you combine them, um, you would, it will look like this. So it's, it's, it's not hidden, but it's really like short. And the, uh, and the sorry, the, the output that you get uh, will look somehow like this. So it's not perfect, but it's okay. <laughs> um, and to give you an idea how this works, so these are the uh, six different characters. Uh, if you use escape, uh, replace stuff, join them together, use a backslash, then we have these characters, and if you use multiple of them, then we also get the L1. Okay, okay. Um, I've also uh, a version up um, Tetris with, uh, with, with only the game. Uh, I want to show you how this looks. So this is the Tetris game itself, unobfuscated <laughs> a bit so, but 
still unreadable for you maybe, but I'm gonna go through. Uh, so we have body unload and the pre-tag with an ID that we reference to later. Then this is the logic that runs in an interval, moving things down, and also use the on key down um, handler to, to move blocks around. And this logic is to render the board, and this is the whole code that you need for the logic of the game. Uh, and if you look at this, you will see a lot of like bit shifting and you know, byte-wise operators. And to explain you the idea of rendering the board as this is what we want to have in the end, and instead of rendering every character, I say, okay, Tetris could also be like a binary re representation of this board. And instead of this, I could also like play with a number only. So I have the number 192, the binary representation looks like this, this and uh, if we replace all the zeros with dots and all the ones with a um, hash, then we get the board. And to move things around, um, I simply use bit shift things. So to move things down, it will be shifted by five, so it moves down. Uh, if we want to have it like left and right, you only shift it by right, uh, by one or minus one. And to detect collision, we can, the, uh, we can use the bitwise end, and it will give you true or false back to decide what's going on. Yeah, and that's it. So this is the final thing of what you have seen before. Um, you can see the, the, um, the final thing here at the slash four. I use the four as it's in, in Tetris. And um, <laughs> the biggest question I usually, I'm doing a long Q&A session, session usually. But the biggest question is, why do you do this? <laughs> where's, my, where's my water? Give me a second. OK, yeah, this, this is the big, the, big, the big question here. Um, first of all, it's really fun. <laughs> it's, so maybe to explain you, um, my job is um, I'm more like a manager now in the company because I'm one of the co-founders and I'm managing the whole front-end team and I don't have time during my day job to, to <laughs> put my hands on the JavaScript and at night it's really fun to do something crazy. And this is one reason, but another reason is that you push limits. You put your own limits because you, you know a specific range um, of JavaScript and you want to learn more, but it's also like pushing limits in, in case of, uh, in, in, in case of like ho how many things will I get into the specific amount of characters that I've set. It's also focus. So one thing that you learn is um, you have an idea and you really have to focus on this idea. You don't have to, like you can't put things uh, from everywhere in there, but you really have to focus on the, on the smallest amount um, and this really helps me, for example, on, on my day job too. So I learn how to focus on ideas and it's also like people or clients coming with crazy ideas and I think, okay, what's the, what's the tiny thing inside that they want to care about? Um, language, language from, a, from, from JavaScript itself. So I would say, or before I've done this, I, I said, okay, I'm, I'm quite good in JavaScript. Uh, I know 90% or 99%, but, but now I learn, like every time I start something new, I learn new things about escaping things, how you can work with binary. So I have no, um, I have no computer science degree, I did something totally different, but I learn new stuff every time I practice with this. And that's cool. And um, what I like too is um, people from different, nations and different countries, different languages come together to work on this kind of stuff. So I'm not the only one doing this. I'm just part of like many. And um, there was this de demo scene before. It was like in the 90s or 80s, it started, I think. And they always have these small teams and they always try to hide their code and they don't want it to have this exchange, but now once we have Git and we use JavaScript and everyone can uh, watch, uh, view 
the, the source codes, people come together from all over the world and give you small improvements. So someone say, okay, in the last session said, okay, once you have an, uh, not an on load, but an on key event on an HTML tag, then you don't need the, this anymore inside of the code. So some new stuff that I've n I didn't knew about. And um, it's cool because people from Russia, from, from Asia, from France, from, from the US and Germany, and they all come together and like, try to push the limits together. And they learn together. Yeah, and that's it. So I say thanks. Thanks for listening. <laughs> we, we still have some time. Oh, and we have some questions already. Um, yes? Oh. Yeah, okay, so the question is, in the, or the statement is, in the next version of ECMAScript, there's, they, they skip the octal sequences. But as far as I know, this only applies to this new syntax where you have these template strings. This, um, so if, if you use the double quotes and single quotes, then you're fine with octal things. But if you use this, I'm, I'm not sure how they're called, this, huh? the back ticks, yeah, the back ticks, then you can't use it. Um, this is one thing. I had a sli slide about ECMAScript in there, but I thought it would be too much. But as you're asking, um, once we have ECMAScript 6 spread across, then we can use even crazier features, for example, to assign functions. Function is really the worst thing that you always have to use. It's so long, and if you only use the bold error uh, thing, then it would be way shorter. So I could like shave off some bytes of my existing code. Any way to debug this stuff? <laughs> 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 to debug. Um, so maybe to, to tell you, I, uh, this JS fuck thing, for example, I did um, a tool that will convert this stuff for me, and it uses Aclify, or it's not the, J, um, the JS fuck, but, but usually it uses a tool set, Aclify JS to get away all the planks and then use something else that will replace stuff. Now I can, can write something um, by hand, manually, but usually I, I use a long uh, tool chain to do this. And um, it's, it's not easy to debug this, so, but it's, it's a short code. And um, one thing I learned here is that you really have to structure your, your original code. So the original code is really well aligned and I have comments everywhere and every variable, because it's really short, has to be named in a specific way. And this is also something I, I take back to, to work, because once you have to write code that is so small and so ugly, then you have to learn how to manage this kind of code and manage this kind of complexity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, for some, so I should include this. This is a good, good point. Should include this the next time I write this. So usually I already have this minified version, but with planks and a new line. So it's like a really short but totally long thing to execute. And to to replace stuff, I use a converter that I wrote myself. And yeah. Like I have many of them. They are not. Oh, <laughs> and, and it depends. And and yeah. Like yeah. Right. I also have a tool. For example, this this um, the Russian star thing. I have a tool where I can input an, a bitmap, and it will align the code based on this bitmap, and then resizes the bitmap <laughs> until the code matches. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess the source mess is here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, next, uh, have you 
have seen that uh, or done any practical benchmarks on the performance uh, impacts of this kind of stuff. <laughs> because <laughs> because sure. this JavaScript engine actually needs to run this at pulse and it takes yeah. some more additional time. And I understand this is mostly for fun, but still. So, it's, it's mostly for fun. I, I would not recommend to write this stuff <laughs> <laughs> in, your, in the code that you use at a company. First thing, um, the benchmarks, um, I've done several things. For example, I did an um, H, uh, RGB to uh, HSL converter, a uh, color converter. And because it was so, so tiny, and, uh, and another thing I did is a base64 encoder in 140 bytes. And the funny thing is because it was so reduced, it was also really fast. Um, so, but it depends on the Earth, for example, the spinning globe. Uh, once you open this for a while, the battery will drain in like half an hour, and it's, it's like using nuclear power to, to render this. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, do you think that this kind of hacks could be used for actual minification of production JavaScript code? To what? To, to minify production JavaScript code when you look at the inspector and see if absolutely not, and debug it somehow. Yeah, it's a, so um, it's not. So um, um, Aclify.js, for example, and also Google Clojure, they are quite good in like minifying things. But, um, like huh? but not like that. Yeah, but um, I think it, uh, what, what I've learned here is you can't assign, uh, sometimes you can't say, oh, there's a specific rule for this. It, it always depends on the context. So mm -hmm. sometimes it might so make sense. not ubiquitous. Yes. Yeah, I would say okay. it's not you because. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I'm done. How long did it take you to write some of the demos you showed? You should ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Too long. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, you, I spent some. So I try to focus on one idea, and um, usually, so I'm traveling a lot and um, been to a lot of conference and usually say, okay, for a new conference, I want to have something new. And then I try to make it as, as soon as possible, but I would say it takes always like 10 times more than expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too long. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. <laughs> How much uh, breaks does it take to have a full legend ultimate? To what? Uh, uh, this this uh, JS fuck? Uh, so yeah. you, you saw this, this you brackets. Can get yeah. And get an error yeah. It, and if you want to get the full alphabet, how much effort? Okay. So if we uh, if you use this JS fuck converter, I think it will be some like one hundred thousand characters to get all of them. And the most complicated thing is a capital C, mm -hmm. um, because it's it's a bit more complicated than the the thing I showed you, um, yeah, the cap I think the capital C is like 16,000 characters to get. <laughs> <laughs> but once you have this, then you can say, okay, okay um, string from char code. So you, you don't need to get all of the characters, but the capital C is the last thing that you need to use, and then you combine this and you say a string from char code and you pass only numbers. So it depends on the project. For the JS fuck, I don't write this in there. So um, using numbers is a good point. I didn't show you how to like um, get the specific yes. uh, number. But if you say um, array, uh, not array, and then add another not array, <laughs> and then it's uh, then it's forts plus forts. And if you have forts plus forts without the quotes, it's zero. Yes. And if zero you say, and one is pretty easy. How do you get yeah, quotes? and then to get the others, then you have to say, okay, I get zero plus uh, one plus one. You do this all around, and then um, it, at the point when you get this ten, then you say, okay, I have the string one and the string zero okay, to com so combine this. Okay, so no questions anymore. Thank you, and I would say enjoy the lunch, huh? Uh, what? Well?